Technica. Great, thank you, Diana. First of all, thank you everybody for joining our call here. And thank you to our key speaker of this session, Monica Luca, Senior Product Manager at UiPath, a leadership and an excellent subject matter expert in the document understanding and AI space, joining us today from Romania. Monica, thank you for your time to join us to this session today. Um, I know as much as the audience, Russell and I, Diana as well, we are all excited to see um, this document understanding connection with generative extraction and APIs. So once again, thank you for joining us and I uh, hand the whole floor over back to you. Thanks a lot for having me. I'm very excited to be here and I'm very excited to tell you about our latest feature. I'm super curious about your feedback. And uh, yeah, before I get started, I just want to say that the features I'm going to present today are partially in preview and may change as a result of your feedback. So please keep this in mind when, um, yeah, eventually starting to use, when you start to use those, reach out to us if they don't work as expected. Now today, I want to basically cover the two um, the two topics in the agenda. First, document understanding and as cloud APIs, and then secondly, our generative features, which are currently in preview, with regards to pre-labeling, extraction, and classification. To begin with, document understanding cloud APIs. So you may already be familiar with how we provide document understanding framework capabilities as RPA. We have some Windows legacy activities in the Intelligent OCR package, and we newly launched a document understanding package, which is available cross product, across platform to be used cross studios, and um, which provides a similar set of capabilities. And lastly, we also provide document understanding as software as a service via cloud APIs. Um, I have discussed already with some of you saying that, hey, I haven't really tried out the APIs. Before showing them to you, I want to underline the following. You may know that you have shifted from an RPA to an AI automation company, and basically APIs provide you another means of automation. While until now you were basically required to use RPA to implement your document processing workflows. Now you also have the ability to use APIs and consume them via any technology, via any technology as REST calls. Now, um, depending on your use case, one or the other solution may work better for you. For example, if you have um, the requirement of an automation where your customer uses maybe UI automation to interact with legacy systems, requires maybe triggers, or requires some more complex processing which involves multiple uh, external applications for which connectors come in very handy, then uh, the recommendation would be to use the standard document understanding in RPA. However, if you have a customer which is not really interested in an automation use case, but rather requires intelligent document processing capabilities to embed into his existing solutions. Let's say, for example, he already has a microservices architecture. He already has components communicating via REST APIs. Then maybe uh, it's worth considering cloud APIs as they provide the same capabilities, however, without the requirement of uh, workflows and robots. So really, depends very much on the use case and it's for you to analyze both solutions. I'm going to present this to you so that you can take them into consideration and to work out what best works for your use case. Enough with the talking, let me show you. So basically I prepared the use case I wanted to demonstrate to you. It's something like um, basically provide fast for breeding capabilities to airports. So you have this customer, which has the following use case, you know, airports serve millions of passengers every day to ensure their security, um, immigration compliance and safety, passports are scanned. Now the challenge is that, um, the challenge is that we need a way to scan the passport, extract the information for them, verify against uh, border control, and against the flight ticket of a passenger, and to do this pretty fast. For this, we have the company called PassScan, ingenious, right? 
which offers these uh, capabilities to airports. So basically, it offers airports a software which scans documents, identify whether they are whether the documents are passports indeed, and if yes, extracts the information from them. And this information is then feed into the border control system and immigration system or security databases to verify whether the passenger can proceed to check in. PassCan requires a near real time solution not to make passengers wait and uh, wants to be able to consume it via Python code. So this would be our use case, which you may argue you can implement with RPA. Yes, but it is not a typical automation scenario. With your iPad, you can use document understanding via cloud APIs. So PassCan can offer these capabilities to his customers. Let me show you how this works. If you go here in document understanding, Sorry, let me use the production environment. If you go here in document understanding, you have here the option of REST APIs. And if you click here on framework, you can see all the operations we have available via the REST APIs. This Swagger interface will provide you insights about how to implement, how to consume these endpoints. And you can see we have kind of like five, five big components. First would be the discovery components where you can retrieve information about your document understanding project. Not only will you retrieve here the custom projects, the one for which you developed your own extraction and classification models, but also about the predefined ones where we provide the pre-trained models. After discovering these capabilities, we provide you a means to digitize a document, classify it, extract it, and validate it by creating an action in Action Center. Let me show you how they work. So if I were PassCan or customer, first thing I would do is authorize. And in this sense, I would provide the app ID and app secret, which I retrieved when creating an external application and click on authorize. Now that I'm in, I can try to verify what are some available projects. In this sense, I will use the get project endpoint and I will click on execute or try it out. And here I see the list of projects. As mentioned, besides the custom trained project, we have this predefined project, which contains all pre-trained models. And we have some more details about the project, like when it was created, how it can be uh, how its details can be accessed uh, and some rules for discovery and digitization. And here I can see a list of the custom projects. Now, note that the projects, when I create a project, I have some OCR settings set on them. These will then be used for you to execute the operations. You can discover projects, you can discover the details of a project. Similarly, for example, for a project ID, I can retrieve what are all, for example, document types contained in it, and then uh, extractors, sorry, classifiers, extractors, and so on. And this works again for custom or the pre-trained project. And then once you discover, let's say, all skills you have available, you can go ahead and consume them. We're going to do the following. First thing to do would be the digitization start route. To try it out, we would provide a project ID. By default, we are going to use the default project. And we can optionally provide the page range um, to work with. It, it should not it does not need to be an interval. We can as well have with like this pages two to five, then six and seven. But let's say in my case, I want to, as mentioned in the use case, I need to just scan the passport. It's fine, no page range. In order to do so, I will provide here the file. Let's say I'm going to use this passport sample, which is my passport and I think I have redacted a lot of the information, but you will see the point. And after I provide the digitization request, I am receiving a document ID. Now this document ID references the results of the digitization. It references the text and the associated document object model. This document ID is also the ID which I use further when processing the documents. 
Let me show you how it works. So not only that I can receive the result by providing it here as input. And here I can see, okay, it's an image. And then I can see Romania because <laughs> of obvious reasons and whatever text it has extracted from the passport. And then this is the equivalent document object model you may be familiar with in the intelligent OCR framework or which is also available that's part of the document data object which comes with extract document data. Now, besides digitization, I was telling you that the use case asks us to classify and to see whether the document is indeed a passport. And in this sense, we can use the predefined project and the ML classifier and provide here in the body of the request the document ID. And based on the same ID, I will receive a classification results. And I can see here that is a passport document type ID. And based on this document type ID, I can select an extractor. If you're wondering how to do so, I'm going to show you. Um, you would do this by looking into the extractors available out of the project you work with. In my case, the predefined one. And if I look at the extractors, I can see here a document type ID based on which I can choose the corresponding extractor. In our case, let's see. Ah, uh, no surprise, it has the passport's ID. So I'm going to use this ID for the extractor to extract the information from my document. Keep in mind that this is a case for the pre-trained models. For custom ones, you will have a generated ID, which won't be so easily read user-friendly as in this case, passport. It will be generated. I can show you if you want. But yeah, this is how you would retrieve the corresponding extractor. And now that you know what you extractor you want to use, you can simply go here under extraction and provide here the corresponding extractor ID, which in my case, I guess was passports. And the document ID, which I received when digitizing the document. And when I click on execute, I see here the extraction result the same way I would be retrieving it in RPA. I can see that it has a passport number, but again, I think I reducted the file. I can show it to you, Ah, but I didn't reduct everything. You can see my last name. You can then see my first name and so on. So basically the same um, extraction results you would have access to from RPA. Another thing I want to mention is that we provide both operations, both in synchronous manner and in asynchronous manner. We allow you to consume the APIs in a synchronous manner for documents up to five pages. If there are longer documents, we do not keep your HTTP request hanging, so we suggest you use the asynchronous approach, in which similar as for the synchronous approach, what you do is use the start route provide the extractor or classifier ID as input, let's say it's passports. And then I provide the ID of the document as input. And when I click on execute, I receive as result an operation ID because basically I created an extraction operation which is longer running, therefore it cannot be done synchronously. And the result URL from where I can find the result for my operation. And basically the result URL is also provided here. And what I can do is just provide here the operation ID as result. And then here I can see the result of the um, operation. It has that status succeeded because it was a one page document. However, if you would have provided, for example, a hundred page document as input, then the status may have been in progress because it's not done yet. And you have here the same extraction result as I've previously shown you. And based on this extraction and classification result, you can use the classification APIs to similarly create an action in Action Center. I could show you, but I think you got the point. Let me know if you want to see it or if you have any other questions with regards to the APIs, or I would also be looking forward to your feedback, namely, do you see such use cases for them? Have you encountered the need with some customers which 
aim purely automation focus, but rather maybe um, would more like to use IDP or are more focused around IDP. Have you have have you encountered any time a use case in which a customer has come to you saying something like, hey, I want document understanding, like with focus on this? I hi, this is Andy. I have a different question. Um please. Um I mean the APIs are you know considerably more complex to use and requires a higher skill level to to implement, right? Uh, how is this going to how is this going to uh, kind of um, drive in the direction of uh, making you know AI truly service oriented meaning if there is a business customer who would like to use document understanding but wouldn't like to make a big API based project out of it um, would that be something I think that's that's going to be coming alongside in the future, isn't it? So Andy, I doubt that business users are the users of APIs because the same users of APIs need to know some programming skills. Right, they I mean, that's, yeah. Like... Yeah, if, so... if, if business Please. users would need to upload a document and get some intelligence back on the document as instantly as a service without having to um, go through elaborate APIs. Of course, there are projects where you have to do this via APIs and, and you require a big team to work on it, depending on the scale of the project. But on a more uh, user-friendly level, um, how is the, how is that play into, how does that play into the larger vision of making AI truly a commodity to consume, right? Because that's where the the market is driving towards and, and the world is driving towards. So um so api is great higher level of skills bigger team um you know but in case of business users how is that gonna uh, play you know um right so um i don't think apis are for business users yeah they're okay. for programmers in case of business users wanting to use document understanding um, I recommend the Extraction Automation Builder and Studio Web and, uh, yeah, document capabilities okay. within Studio Web. I'm happy to show them to you. Okay, I just want, yeah, no, I, that's fine. I mean, I just wanted, if, if in case I face this question, right, uh, because mm -hmm. we always have this question of how easy is it for, for business users to use and uh, we should have an answer on at least a couple of options, right? Like you said, Studio Web and then Correct, uh, correct. Right, so, right. Okay. so okay. for Thank business yeah. users, we would use the low-code, no-code approach, which provides a right. okay. RPA. And also, when I was telling you at the beginning that you need to carefully consider which solution you want to implement, it also takes into consideration the target customer. If your target, oh, sorry, target user, if your target user is someone within your organization, which you want to enable to build his own, uh, own automation, then APS may no sense at all right right yeah that's like... most of the time you get that question right i mean how do i make this easy for someone without having to make a project out of it and and we need to have that answer but okay so studio web low code uh you know no code approach is the only yes. other option we have okay okay thank you yeah well monica quick Sorry. question how have there been webhooks and callbacks on various orchestrator actions <clears throat> for quite a while now um, and I'm not sure whether that stands true for Action Center as well. Is there a callback mechanism for uh, when validation yet. is done? Okay. Not yet, but we have it on our backlog. So we <clears throat> have it on our backlog. We want to provide callbacks for all asynchronous operations so that you get notified when the operation is done. Not only validation, but of course makes total sense, but also the classification and extraction of files which are larger than five pages. Yep, that makes would sense. Would you see this as an adoption showstopper? Like no, it's not an adoption that... showstopper. It's just a little bit more work to, to write that pulling, and then you know, correct. It's always correct. it's always tricky. We've used we've used the callbacks on various actions within you know job started callback, job job ended callback correct. type things. And in orchestrator, that's been my hidden 
gems in, in UiPath that nobody uses. <laughs> but uh, it, it, just, it would be great to have that as well, uh, especially for validation. I, I get it for the, for, the, for, the, <clears throat> for the digitization and the, and the extraction. I can, I can write a polling mechanism, but then, you know, the extraction oh, yeah. stuff, generally people would want things done as soon as they validate, right? or sooner than they validate. So then I have to have a separate polling mechanism that's just continually pulling that. And, um, yes. That's, mm. Makes that's something that'll be really sense. good. <clears throat> Makes total sense. Uh, so yeah, it's on our backlog. We will eventually add it. Does, does this crossover into Connection Builder? Would I be able to build my own integration service uh, Connection Builder using these APIs? No, these APIs provide you access to document understanding capabilities. Well, technically, I guess I could put the swagger in there and it would generate yeah, something yeah, for me. Yeah, I, I think we'll put it in. <laughs> ah, yes. Yes. Very, very, very meta, but I understand yes, of the, course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I understand but, the question. So yes, eventually you would be able to use the swagger definition and create the resources based on that in uh, using a custom connection in integration services, yeah. sure. Yeah, no but, one stops uh, you from consuming the APIs by RPA. Right, right. And sorry, Russell here, and, and just to add to the discussion. You can do that, but I don't think you 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 um it doesn't make sense. But if you're doing with robots, the, might as well do it with, with you already a... have the activities in studio app and studio. And this uh as I said on the chat as well, this is starts with keeping in mind that this starts with UiPath Studio, you already have the document setting in UiPath Studio. But, but it would make sense APIs in Studio Web, isn't the... it? Sorry? Would it make sense in Studio Web? I think it's, it's to, you have document understanding in Studio Web as well, right? And this I mean, you have APIs... document understanding activities already built into the Studio, so I don't okay. think... No, that's, that's good to know, because uh, that's good to know. I mean, um, I see what I'm trying to do here is trying to get answers to what typically users would ask us if, uh, you know, if, uh, looking at how they explore the technology stack. Uh, so that's good. Yeah, if it's already in Studio Web, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. And, um, but it can, Monica, it, yeah. but technically it's possible to do it. If, it if, is. Right. Right. Okay. This, is a, this is a perfect, this is a perfect thing for our customers who are actually not looking at robots, but are actually looking right. for just IDP exactly. solutions. Right. Um, yes. So for those customers, exactly the use case. well, you know, they, they have some sort of iPass. Um, we've had tons of Workado and Millsoft customers say, I, I, they don't have any IDP capability. Can we just call an API and get this stuff done? Um, I assume from a licensing standpoint, you need the AI units and I assume that would just sell um, independent action center licensing for this, for validation Correct. station? If you want to use validation station, yes. Okay. Correct. Correct, you got it all right. Ahmed, we also have it uh, documented in our metering and charging page in our documentation. So, yeah. Are the, uh, are the I, I have a question. all of that also? Uh, also included through an API, or that's just still done through the um, uh, through the through the UI. What exactly? I'm sorry. The the retraining. Uh, still through the UI yet. Still through the UI. Okay. Thanks. We are working on revamping our retraining mechanism, and I'm hoping that in the future there won't be much for you to do but configuration. I don't know much more about it because a colleague of mine is working on it and currently analyzing what the possible options are, but uh, we don't want to have an explicit API call for training. It should rather be some configurations and training handled in the background. It makes sense. Cool. Um, Praveen, would you like to ask like one last yeah, yeah. question and then sure. show you something no. else? So um, we actually, we also had another meeting with Jigar Modi on the document understanding. So he, we, our question was related to API, whether API, UiPath has API capability or now. This meeting is in the right time we, we got this meeting. So we were just comparing Azure, Azure document understanding product, document intelligency and document understanding UiPath. Because we already have a UiPath platform, we wanted to 
leverage the document understanding. But what, what we are looking at is uh, the API capabilities, this gives API capabilities. So um, for training, right? Like uh, if uh, we, I see that there are three models in any, uh, any either, either Azure or even in uh, uh, UiPath, right? So there is a generic model and also pre-built model like uh, invoices or uh, you know receipts mm -hmm. or uh, health cards or anything right and the third model is uh, uh, the custom model so what what is your recommendation which model do you recommend basically we have a use case where we want to extract the invoices right we get a lot of supplied invoices every month we wanted to automate those process right extracting this information so what what, what is your recommendation like uh, so use the in invoice model or pre-built model or a generic model or, or build a custom model so if i were you i would try out our out of the box models and see how they work in the luckiest case they work pretty well for you we have a lot of adoption on the invoices model so maybe you can use the out of the box one so just oh. use it on your invoices see the results if they are not satisfying enough, then create your own custom model starting from the base from the invoices based model because this means that you benefit from the previous training and just add custom training on top. Okay. And if if that still is not good enough, start training your model from scratch. But if I were you, I would try out with out of the box one. Yeah, we without the box model, just add another more fields. Usually correct that's not out of the box anymore that you can, correct, that you can just train on top and, of it exactly sure. uh, correct. regarding the training correct. right the training uh, i saw the textron we use for the training right there is a tool textron uh, that is where we train the models right is and... it textron where, how do you train them like uh, if i use the invoice pre-built model right if I want to train a new document, how do I train it? Is there a tool or where do I train it? I would be happy to show it to you if we have time at the end. No, no, but that I don't, you don't have to show me, but what, where do you, is it, is there a tool available to train the additional documents? Or? So yes, you do this in the document manager. Oh, it's in, in the UI UI document, document manager? Sending. Yes, yes. Oh, got it. Got it. I think I can even give you. We have this. Meaning hi. We have this guideline about training. I will leave you this in the chat. Cool. Uh, now, besides the APIs, I wanted to show you something else. I wanted to show you um, our newest features with regards to generative capabilities. And it's basically three of them. Gen generative pre-labeling, extraction, and classification. And again, I have prepared the use case, uh, which would be automating order returns. Uh, this is Michelle, which is a customer support agent working for UI people. She's a MacBook user without coding and AI skills. And basically, she receives various return requests via email based on the following documents. An order return form, which she will input the reason for the return in the order management system, a warranty document, which needs to verify so that the product fulfills the warranty conditions, and finally, an invoice, because she needs to verify, verify the validity of the purchase. Let me show you how we're going to use the three generative feature to solve her use case. First of all, there would be generative pre-labeling, and we're going to use this for creating an extractor to process order return forms. I'm going to show you how you would basically go about training your own custom model, and in my case, with generative pre-labeling. To do so, I have already created but I can start from scratch. I want to start from scratch. I will create a customer support project.
And then in my customer support project, I will define a new document type as semi-structured AI. And in my case, it's going to be an order return form. And let's say I want to work with five regular fields. And when I click on creating the document type, it gets created. And now I want to upload documents to it. So I train my extractor. Until now, what would have happened is um, we would be uploading the documents and we would manually label all the fields. Right now, with the predict with the pre-labeling feature, we can predict some of the fields so that basically the labeling user mostly has to um, validate that the predictions are correct. Let me show you how it works. So I will upload an order return form. And then I will define the fields I want to work with as part of my custom document type. And due to our newest feature with the pre-labeling, I can set up an ML model much quicker than I would normally do. Let me quickly show you how it works. And until it, this is imported, I will ask, answer the question, in the chat is clipboard ai club with this predefined model so clipboard ai is using document understanding in the background they work on adopting the apis i previously shown you so the functionality or the results should more or less be the same hope this answers once i have imported my document i can define my fields let's say my custom field would be the name because i want to extract the name from the order return form and then i want to extract the address and then i want to extract the city and then i want to extract the invoice order number And then I want to extract the zip code. And what would normally happen is that, or before us having this pre-labeling feature is that we would basically come and select each of the field for every document and perform the labeling manually. But with this predict feature, I just click on the predict button and in the background, we're using a large language model to detect which would be the fields so we can label them. And then what I do is just verify that the information is correct. So this is the name. I'm happy with it. This is the address. Happy with it. City. I can confirm order number. Confirm. Yes, happy. And I would do this the same for all the documents I have available, which drastically reduces my labeling time. I won't finish creating the extraction model right now because this would require labeling 10 documents and I don't have 10 return orders. But um, I think you get the point. So basically this um, helps us create um, or train a custom extractor much easier than before. And once this, is, once this is trained, I can then further use it in my automation. And with regards to business users, as someone asked, how do we enable them to uh, create automations? For them, we've built this extraction automation builder. This allows them to upload the document and we create an automation for them. Let me show you how it works. So basically when I click on get started, I click to upload the file. Let's say the corresponding invoice is this IKEA invoice I work with and I upload it. And then what happens is that in the background, the document gets classified. And if I want, I can change the detected document type with something else. In this case, uh, it is confident that it is an invoice. Yes, I'm happy with the result. It is indeed an invoice. I can provide here some optional configuration like modify the name or um, enable or disable the validation basically creating of a validation task in action center but i'm happy with the config and when i click create workflow what happens is that i have a document understanding workflow readily created in studio web which i will just run for you and then information gets extracted and for me printed on the console this would be a very good starting point for all the business users here they can then customize based on their needs 
If this is not enough, what else they can do is leverage the Studio Web Templates. Have you seen the Studio Web Templates? Don't know how to. Maybe you can react and raise your hand if you if you are using or you've seen Studio Web Templates. Yes. Happy to hear, because they facilitate automation so much. These are things for the business users. Here, they just need to configure stuff. OK, um, and this is the workflow. Basically, what happened is that the file has been uploaded in Orchestrator. And then we have pre-set up an extract document data activity with a predefined project and the pre-trained extractor, because the extraction automation builder only works with the pre-trained models. And uh, basically, after extracting the information, we have provided here the validate document data activity. And what happened is that um, while running the workflow, an action center task has been created for me. I see this pop up. I can go ahead and see the task, validate whatever information has not been extracted correctly, and then proceed to the execution. In my case, I am happy with the, with the extraction. I just validate the document. I confirm the table data. And then once I'm done validating my document, I just resume execution. And then I see the extracted data. Now, Andy. This would be something I recommend to a business user. What do you think about this? Does this make more sense? Yes, yeah, yes. This is something they could easily work with. This is something they can start customizing and have be just be up and running. And if that's not enough, you go to templates and you search, yep. for example, for invoice. And then you see, oh, for example, extract data from a new invoice file in OneDrive and store it in Excel. And you start from here and customize from here. Okay, but in our use case, we don't work with invoice. I mean, we do partially work with invoices. And uh, to speed up a little the process, I have pre-created a workflow, which starts from this. This is my pre-creation. For each folder in a for each file in a customer support folder I have in my Google Drive, do something. If you remember the use case, the use case was like follow, I process three types of documents and depending on the type, I do something with them. So therefore I need to classify the two. To do so, I will search for classified document. And then uh, in my classified document, the pre-selected classifier is the predefined classifier as part of the predefined project. But in my case, so the predefined classifier does not support the document types I work with or the return form, warranty document. It does support invoices though. So it's not enough for me. So what I do is change the predefined into this generative classifier. Note that this model is still in preview. This functionality is still in preview. And you will see it in Studio Web only with a community account. Preview functionality is not available in Studio Web for enterprises accounts. Um, and let's say I want to use the generative classifiers. And in this case, I'm going to build a prompt. And I'm doing this like follows. I have this set of key value pairs where the key represents the document types. Let's say the first one would be like warranty document and the value would be some description of the document type. For example, warranty document about the warranty conditions of a project product. And then invoice document. Um, I'm missing the English word. This is the, the providing details about the purchase. And then finally, we have an order return form 
understand in this case in information about um, other than people. So this is the front I built. These are the three potential document types which I want classified. Um, I provide as input whatever I have retrieved from the for each file folder and I will let's log the output and let it be the identified document type equals and here from document data I select this document type name. Let's run it to see what happens. I can show you in the meantime the folder. So basically we have this matrix warranty and then we have this return packing slip, which is the order return request form. And finally, what we have is the IKEA invoice. So basically these are the three documents which we work with. First one is identified document type as invoice and then warranty document and then Finally, it should be the order return form. We have this issue that warranty documents ain't really structured. So training a model for them would not be the most efficient way of processing them. And therefore for unstructured documents, especially for unstructured documents, we provide generative extraction capabilities. Let me show you how we use this. So we would add a condition if we encounter a warranty document to set up an extract document data activity with generative capabilities. Let me show you how it works. So if the document type is warranty document, what we're gonna do is log a message and then the text would be something like encounter warranty document and then the document name and then we use extract document data to extract information from it in this sense we are using the pretty fan project and the generative extractor similar story as for the classifier it's in preview and then here i define the prompt and let's say i want to to extract the name name of the uh, um, on the form and then we want to extract for no for eligibility yes defining the prompts may not be the easiest task but you shall try it out and you'll see how it works and then as input file I provide the document data from the classified document activity. What happens is that this document data object contains various attributes which are populated by various activities. The first activity, which is having the file as input and not another document data, will populate this document metadata attributes with regards to the text and the document object model, which basically come as a result of a digitization and these other attributes too, where applicable. And then depending on the type of activity used, for example, extraction or classification, either the document type or the fields are, or the, or a data attribute is populated on the document data. So therefore, I provide the document data as input. And then finally, let's say we want to validate the results. And therefore, I'm creating this, I'm using this create validation task and wait, and provide as input the document data from extract. Document data, what's wrong with it? And the action title or something like validate, warranty info. I think Studio Web is a little slow today. Let me try this again.
I'm using this to not suspend the workflow. So, and now when I run my workflow, Don't know why this is not working. Sorry for this, but I'm using the development environment. Maybe not the best environment to do for the demo, huh? Okay, now when I run my uh, extraction, basically uh, when I run my automation, what I'm expecting is that the document gets classified and then depending on the classification result, whenever a warranty document is encountered, I am extracting, I am extracting the data as per my defined prompts and then I can validate it. Um, and in the meantime, yeah, I think what's mama's full name? Sorry, In the meantime, I want to go through your question, also being cautious of time. Will the predict word for unstructured documents? Russell is right, it may, but in case of contracts or more like really unstructured communication documents, I'm not sure. If I were you, I would give it a try. And very important, when things do not work, raise it to us. Because we many times encountered the situation in which, oh, I struggled so much to get this working. And we're like, hmm, it was a bug. Have you raised it? No, I gave up. <laughs> and we go like, please, please raise it. We are able to help you. You may not know, but we are able to help you. I have the action center task created and I wanna show you how the extraction went. Validate, so this is the task I have created. If I assign it to me. I can basically see um, that it identified this as name and it identified this as date. It correctly identified, but I'm not sure why I get the wrong reference, but let's say I'm happy with the results and similar as for the pre-trained models, I just submit it and then I'm done. So this would be for the extraction, for the generative extraction classification and pre-labeling feature. Um, then it's okay for me to go over the questions in the chat. Oh, yes. Good. How about checkboxes? So for checkboxes, we recommend using our specialized model. You can give generative a try. It may work for you depending on how you define the prompt, but generally I think that if you, I think that specialized model may work a little better considering you label the checkboxes accordingly. Both extraction models have access to the same digitization result. However, again, I think it's more difficult for you to define the prompt. Give it a try. Let us know how it works. George Roth asked us, how do you use AI units for doing this? Um, this functionality is still in preview, so the discussion about pricing is still ongoing. George, uh, how do we use AI units? 
basically we convert the tokens in AI units, something like this. Is it using Azure Chat GPT? Can we bring your our own instance of Azure Chat GPT? Um, not yet. So we use a large language model which we have deployed as part of our um infrastructure. I have we have some details with regards to this in the documentation. Maybe you can read more about there. If I train a model, will I be able to use it via API from Studio Desktop? Sharon is right. Yes, you should be able to use it as long as the skill is accessible. You can as well leverage the activities. So whatever you have seen now in Studio Web, you can as well use in Studio Desktop. It should work the same. If not, it's a bug on our side, raise it to us. Bill asked, for interaction with Microsoft products such as SharePoint, OneDrive, Excel, are you using their connectors? Do you use any of the predefined flows at times? Sometimes, yes. Sometimes I use from the templates. Just for this use case, I'm, I just created this with the custom connection. You do have connection for most, most of the stuff you mentioned. Uh, what is the consumption of AI units for labeling, George? We don't have a decision on this yet. I think it's going to be free, but I'm not sure. It's still, it's still finalized by the pricing team in preparation for GA. Um, Ahmed asked, do I have any connectors published for the UE Empower Automate? in Microsoft? Not yet, no. Can you think of a use case or what would be the need? Would be curious about you. Would be cool if you could reach out, yeah. Ahmed. Microsoft's OCR and document products leave a lot to be desired, right? With no action center, no validation. So I have some customers who use um, flows, not the Power Automate mm -hmm. desktop product, but mostly flows for their internal. Mm -hmm. Right. So it would be great to be able to integrate IDP product right there. So I can say, OK, great, fine. You do all your flows. Their documents are all in SharePoint, all of that. So they have a flow that they go through. Um, so be, uh, of course, I can always call the API. That's not a problem. Right. But if it's a if it's a published connector, it just makes it easier for our, our folks to use it than having to teach them the whole, you know, API connectors and all of that. Then I just need to have another more experienced person on that. Uh, so I have some customers who are who are sort of on the fringes, have not yet bought the robot product because they don't have any desktop uh, sort of use cases. They only have, you know, uh, sort of serverless type use cases. So it'd be great to be able to add IDP to those. It's just the API thing opens it up to be able to use no matter what you're using, right? Um, Makes sense, yes. So I have I have some customers who have uh, who have other RPA products, but really hate their um, IDP. So, IDP. To, right? so as they're making the, the the switch to UiPath on the robot side of the house, they would love to use DU on there. So it just makes it easier. So that was the, that was the sort of the vein of the question. If I have it in Power Automate, then I could just quickly drag a connector in and start using it. We don't yet, but I'm sure we're going to build it if there's demand. Okay. Good feedback though. Um, another question is this bot is public. I assume so Studio Web uses some serverless robots which you don't need to explicitly set up, but I'm not sure if this also answers the question. I hope it does. It works only uh, cloud as of now. Yes. Are there any plans for on-premise? Not yet. Again, depends on demand. If you have a lot of customers asking for generative capabilities for on-prem, yes. I'd be curious about your use case. Sorry, I thought the question was, um, but it's available in studio, right? As well, the, the, the DU, these activities. Yes, so these activities are available in studio as part of a package called document understanding. 
So in studio, instead of downloading the intelligent OCR package, you download the package called document understanding. And you will see exactly these activities. I hope I answered. Um, finally, do these models have token limits? Eventually, yes. I'm not sure what these are. You let us know if you face any limits, if you get any errors for the limits. Will do, will do. Just, just curious, because that's the first thing that comes up usually. I'm sure we have some safety guards in place. I'm pretty sure about them. I don't know numbers. I'm sure that engineers have said some there, sorry. Um, but again, if you're facing some issues, limit limitations, let us know. It may be that the limits are too low. Um, but for you as a custom model, we need to have cloud version of orchestrator, right? So in order to be able to use a custom model, yes, you need to have a way to set it up. So you would set it up in document understanding for cloud and for on-prem versions, you set it up in AI center and then you get the URL from your on-premise AI center. Cool. Well, thank you everybody for attending today's session and thank you, Monica, for creating such an engaging environment for all of us. It was my pleasure. Thank you for the wonderful feedback. Know where to find me, keep it coming. Either reach out to Diana or to me. We're really looking forward to your thoughts. And again, if you face any issues, do let us know. Don't struggle on yourself. And thank you, uh, Sharon and Russell, for watching chat for us and for joining our session as well. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, Have thank a good you. day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.